One. Recording in progress. Go ahead and call the meeting to order. A portion of the city council meeting is conducted by teleconference and that council member Smith is in Livermore, California and is participating today by teleconference. In accordance with the Ralph M. Brown Act, his teleconference location has been identified in the agenda for this meeting. And I'll go ahead and ask uh, Clementine to do roll call vote, please, and make announcements for public uh, meeting participation. Councilmember Barber? Present. Councilmember Garcia? Present. Councilmember Hoffa? Here. Councilmember Smith? Present on Zoom. And Mayor Williamson? Here. And uh, for those of us here in person, for your safe attendance, please um, consider that wearing a mask is recommended and encouraged. Please keep your phones and devices in the council chamber muted to prevent audio interference with our meeting. And for those of you on Zoom, there are two ways to virtually participate. You may use the Zoom app on your computer or mobile device, and you can also call into the Zoom meeting. To join the meeting on Zoom on your computer, smartphone, or telephone, use the link or phone number on the agenda at iSearchMonterey.org. An up-to-date version of the Zoom software must be used. To call in by telephone, dial toll-free 833-568-8864, then enter meeting ID 160-772-9333, pound. And if prompted to enter a participant ID, press pound. Detailed instructions on using and updating Zoom are available at monterey.org slash public meetings. To make a public comment using the Zoom app, you can virtually raise your hand by pressing the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. If you dialed in by phone, raise your hand by dialing star nine, and then unmute yourself when called upon by dialing star six. You must do both. And commenters will be muted until it is their turn to speak. We'll call on each public speaker in the order of their hands raised, and please stay within the time limit established for the meeting, and a timer will be shown on the screen. If you're connected live on Zoom, the timer is accurate with no delay. Today's meeting is also streamed live on the city's YouTube account at youtube.com slash city of Monterey with about 10 seconds delay and on Comcast channel 25 with up to 90 seconds delay. And we look forward as always to receiving your public comment. Thank you, Clementine. Um, all right, I would like to request that Councilmember Smith respond to the following questions. Councilmember Smith, can you hear me well? I can. Were you able to hear our proceedings on this end up to now? Yes, I have. Do you have a copy of the agenda for this meeting? I do. Was the agenda posted 24 hours prior to the meeting at the location where you are at? It was. Is your location accessible to the public such that any member of the public could participate in this teleconference from your location if he or she wished to do so? They certainly can. Is any member of the public there with you who would like to participate in the public comment portion of this meeting or otherwise address any agenda item for this meeting? No, there's not. And this is for all of you. Can everyone clearly hear Councilmember Smith? The Brown Act requires that any votes taken during the teleconference portion of this meeting be taken by roll call. And with that, we'll go ahead and do Pledge of Allegiance. And I'll ask uh, Councilmember Hoffa. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> All right, and with that, we'll take it to our first agenda item, which is a presentation, National Public Works Week. Um, and I'll just kick it off before passing it to staff that um, our public works staff, I think, is oftentimes underappreciated and, and unseen doing work behind the scenes. Um, and so it's a really great honor, just a small way of giving a little bit of appreciation to our public works team. Um, whether it's parking, whether it's fixing the roads, the parks, uh, the you know, there's there's so much um, that that you all do, um, and just on behalf of all the citizens of Monterey, I just really appreciate all of our staff and the Public Works Department. And with that, I'll pass it over to Hans. So, so I, I guess this applause was for Public Works, not for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but but thank thank you mayor thank you mayor yes thank you so much for for the introduction and i ask uh jesus uh, jesus rios to introduce the topic please
I hear an officer about an excellent public working to preserve during the third and promote. You mentioned the direction that you have to pull Sorry, real quick. Can you try to pull your mic down and try to speak into it a little bit more? To recognize the importance of our public infrastructure and those people that provide these vital services every day. Every public works professional strives to improve the quality of life for the community they serve leading to a healthier, happier communities. Public works helps maintain a community's strength by working together to provide an infrastructure of service. The theme this year is connecting the world through public works. It highlights the way public works professionals connect us physically through infrastructure and inspirationally through service through to their communities. Public works agencies work hard year in and year out to construct, operate, and maintain important infrastructure to allow the community to grow and prosper. The community in turn adds to the growth and advancements, advancement of the region, the nation and the world. You might be asking who is Public Works? Public Works is composed of eight divisions. Public Works Administration, Public Works, Works Engineering, Environmental Regulations, Traffic Engineering, Construction management, fleet management, general service for the Presidio, general service for the city, streets and utilities, harbor and parking. Engineering and construction management, we design and build the city's infrastructure. Some of our current and noticeable projects include the Marina parking lot improvements project, upgrading our parking lot, making it easier to access our beautiful city. Citywide road rehab project phase three, Van Buren Street, reconstructing the road, upgrading curb ramps, making it easier and safer for people to get around, and the Monterey Sports Center, where doors were replaced, windows were replaced, the floors were refinished, and currently they're painting it. Environmental regulations, they develop and coordinate the implementation of existing and new water quality regulation programs in order to protect the natural water quality of our streams, lakes, and the Monterey Bay. Some current projects that they have is to monitor and maintain the storm drains and sanitary infrastructure um, by monitoring the levels of, of water in our storm drains, environmental regulations by doing groundwater remediation, and water resource protection efforts, educating training and outreach. Our traffic engineering division is responsible for the design, installation and monitoring of traffic signals, signs, road markings and other measures to ensure safe and efficient flow of traffic in city streets. Some noticeable projects include the rectangular rapid flash beacon on Casanova and Maui Circle, adaptive signal system, improving traffic flow and faster response to traffic conditions, and the wayfinding signs, making it easier for pe people to get around the city. Fleet management, they operate and maintain our fleet of vehicles. As you can see in these pictures, they work on our vehicles from regular cars and trucks to specialty vehicles such as fire for fire and police, as well as parks department. General services includes building maintenance, and our custodial division. They maintain the Presidio and the various city buildings. Streets and Utilities is responsible for a lot. They do payment markings. They maintain the city sewer and storm drain system. They clear and remove uh, sand from um, various parking lots and the retro. 
They do flood control, maintain our gutters, grates, and catch basins. They install guardrails. They grind down uplifts on sidewalks. The Harbor Division. They improve the rules and regulations for harbor and the marina, allowing greater access to the area. They operate and maintain the harbor. They remove debris from our shores and our beaches. They replace piles in the wharves, and they maintain the beaches by dredging them. And our parking division. They provide customer support, assistance, and information, as well as security in the city's parking facilities. Over the last year, the parking division has continued to transform and adapt in order to provide customer service and access to the city of Monterey. They strive to provide ease of access to our coast and businesses. They replaced, it, replaced outdated pay stations, introduced automatic license plate recognition systems, introduced other language options to the pay stations, and they upgraded electric vehicle charging stations, as well as painted garages, installed regulatory signage, improved distribution of lighting and the restriping. We are all, we all work together as one to be the Department of Public Works. We need to light up here that says uh, applause, you know. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to highlight a few more things that um, I think really highlight and, and things that people feel uh, on a regular basis that maybe weren't identified in the presentation. So uh, as of late, um, the our, our staff is working with the state. We got a grant for a million dollars to connect Lake El Estero to Monterey One Water so that we can recycle that water. Um, and so our staff is doing great work there. To, to actually add to our water supply. So, you know, again, really great work in that area. COVID-19, they were one of the few departments that they were out there doing work. And if anything, I think their work increased because there was a reduction in, in folks using roads. So they really kicked it into high gear with Measure P, Measure S funding to really start uh, resurfacing and fixing sidewalks. And then as of late, the winter storms. Um, they were out there being responsive to the needs of our community along with our public safety officials. So really a lot of appreciation for our public work staff. And um, this week is just a small way that we can give you your appreciation. So really, let's give them applause one more time. <laughs> Anybody else on the council wish to make any quick remarks before we go on to the next item? I think you covered it pretty well, but it looks like Dr. Berber maybe almost six minutes. I'm just adding to what just what you said, and especially during the storms, it, it was amazing. I had people come in and saying, "Oh my goodness, how how quickly!" And this these were people that did not live in Monterey, that were friends of mine, saying how quickly our our public works was dealing with the storm and saying it was done as soon as they got the a response of. This was happening, this was down, something needed to be taken care of, everything, the response time was amazing. And I just wanna say thank you because your work is recognized. We see you. Awesome. Yeah, Gino. Yeah, so um, uh, on a daily, I tend to drive quite a bit around town and, and outside of the city, but as I'm making my rounds, um, I always tend to see somebody from Public Works out and about. So I think that says a lot and and just want to echo what council is saying that, you know, you guys are awesome and and really appreciate all the work that you guys do. Thank you. Uh, Mayor. And I'll pass it to Ed. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, kudos to our public works. I know it's the largest department in in the city and uh, really have demonstrated themselves through the storm. But not only that, I mean, when you you look through our parks, you look at our streets, our roads, our rec trail, uh, all the places we all get out to. And as you've all mentioned, uh, we have a, a top flight workforce and um, there's never enough hands for it because it's a big city with a, a lot of a lot of growth, trees, flowers and uh, roadways. So kudos to the entire team of public works and i've got to give you a secret whenever i see a public works truck park somewhere and i'm ride my bike or i happen to walk by i always want to peek in the bed of the truck um, because i'm always curious what what it is that they're picking up today 
And it's, it's amazing the stuff that you see in the back of a truck that, that they are picking up or that they're working on. So uh, we notice, your community notices, your, your residents uh, so much appreciate you. So thank you to the entire staff of Public Works. But, uh... Okay, and now we'll open up for public comment. So if anybody in the chamber wishes to make any comments, feel free to come up to the mic and uh, speak for your... Sorry? Just on this, yeah, that's correct. Just on this item, specifically in regards to Public Works Appreciation Week. Yeah, uh, may I speak uh, on uh, supporting the Sports Center? Nope, this is just on this item, oh, only this item. I talked about it. <laughs> it was a nice try though. Nice try, William. <laughs> <laughs> this is a rowdy crowd today, I like it. I would like to stress the importance of the quality of our parking at the sports center, which supplies such a needed health issue in times of stress from emerging from COVID. So I wanted to thank you for making it so easy for my wife to get to the sports center, stay sane, be beautiful, and like all these other good Monteregianos. <laughs> all right, anybody else wish to speak on, on this item? <laughs> Do you all want to come up? I feel like there's something that you all want to show us here. Yeah, let's see it. Let's see that side. You guys want to come up and maybe show everybody? Yeah, Mr. Oh, Mayor. On, yeah. This is your moment. This is your moment. <laughs> Do you guys want to take a picture? Let's do a picture. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, everybody. Anybody that's part of Public Works, why don't you come on up? Looks like it's all sports center. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Where did Alan go? Hey, oh, there he is. <laughs> I was like, all I saw was this. This line. You remember? I'm oh, you're short. Shaved. I'm short. <laughs> Where are we? Switch into the picture. Okay, all right. Spring. <laughs> the seasons. Here we go. One, two, three. We're going to take a couple here. One, two, three. One more. Okay. All right. Tell awesome. Us. Andrea, Nat, can you try to get that, that photo? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all right, let's move on. Sorry, I'm a little bit all over the place here. Okay, we're going to move on to um, why we're all here today, I'm assuming. Uh, the study session, is, item number two on the agenda is Monterey Sports Center Operational Analysis. Um, and so without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass it to Hans for staff introduction. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This um, is the uh, report that we uh, want to present to you in, uh, uh, I believe, in, in May, June last year, the, the council uh, approved um, a, a study or an analysis of, of our sports center operation. And um, as we promised you, we would work through uh, this uh, analysis together with our consultants, and uh, then we would present to you the the results of that uh, study. It's it's a it's a collection of recommendations uh, that that we are presenting you to you tonight. Um, there are no decisions to be made. It's um, it's basically the um, uh, our obligation to report back what what was the outcome of this analysis. Um, when I thought about how do I introduce the topic tonight, I think it's it makes sense to start uh, with with the actually uh, inception of the sports center. Uh, it was a an idea plan that that started to develop in 1988 with the city council at that time and. Uh, Got a lot of support from from the community, and in 1992, uh, our sports center actually opened, and it is a, a symbol of of what our community has accomplished. It's a community pride uh, symbol. Uh, it is um, it has its goal to provide affordable uh, public uh, fitness options for uh, for family oriented 
uh, uh, patrons. Um, early on, the, the city council realized they made a big mistake because it was too small. And uh, early on, the council then decided we will have to expand the sports center. And so just 10 years later, uh, in 2002, the, the sports center expansion was opened, and uh, that was based on the huge success that this uh, sports center had in, in our uh, region. Um, when the sports center opened in 1992, and also when the expansion was built in, in 2002, um, the, the fitness um, industry on the Monterey Peninsula was not uh, in a space where it is right now. We didn't have, we had on North Fremont Street, for instance, uh, Safeway still operating. And um, then when Safeway uh, closed down and left the building vacated for a while, later on, we had in shape moving on. Uh, we have several uh, other competitors that came to the peninsula since then as well. We have 24 hour fitness here. We have other facilities here, smaller studios, etc. So between 1992 and 2023, uh, what we see also is, is a change in the fitness market. And we wanted to, to take the opportunity also to, to kind of find uh, what is our sweet spot again. We, we were not the only game in town. Um, there are other uh, uh, facilities that, that are also providing similar products. So what, what, what can we do better? Where do we need to improve? What, what are the things that we can do uh, to uh, maintain uh, the status that I always call, we are the premier fitness facility on the Monterey Peninsula. So how can we remain the premier fitness facility, the first choice for anyone who wants to use a fitness facility? So that was the, the, the start off point of our analysis and our work with our uh, consultant team. Uh, I make a hard break right now and hope you follow me. Uh, in my thinking. In 2019, uh, the city council became aware uh, about the fiscal um, operations that we had, the fiscal uh, situation of the city of Monterey. Uh, we, we had started a year before to talk to you, the council and the public, about the fiscal health for the city of Monterey. We had talked to you also about how we are structuring uh, our uh, our future, but uh, we had a very, uh, very decisive council meeting, I believe it was October, November of 2019, where the council um, basically uh, heard uh, the community, but also heard our team uh, reporting back how we were assessing our financial needs to maintain our infrastructure, to reinvest into our facilities, and to maintain service levels. And at that time, um, the council uh, declared a fiscal emergency, and I, I, I hope some of you still remember those days. We we realized that uh, we we had a we were running a sh champagne city on a beer budget, so to speak, and we needed to do something to uh, to get us out of that situation. And what we did was uh, we uh, uh, went to the voters and ask for measure G, which was a half cent sales and tax increase. And then something happened, February, March, 2020, prior to the election, uh, COVID-19 started, the pandemic shut us down. And uh, in, in March, 2020, the voters approved measure G, half cent sales tax increase that uh, uh, was approved by 63% of the voters at the time, a general sales tax increase, not uh, special tax. And uh, we continued work through the crisis. And so now, again, where are we? Why am I bringing this up again? Uh, we are um, at a point that the pandemic uh, has been declared over. And we, uh, we have, uh, at the beginning of the big, big, uh, pandemic, we had to close uh, many of our facilities. Uh, we had to close the library. We had to close community centers. We had to shut down the conference center. And we also had to, to shut down the sports center and associated or coming with that were also uh, layoffs because we didn't really foresee uh, uh, realistically how long this pandemic would last. And so what we did then uh, in, in, um, in, in March 2020, that a great deal of our operations uh, across the city on many service levels came to a screeching halt. 
And between uh, March 2020 and 18 months later, the city suffered around $32 million in losses with respect to sales tax, TOT, and um, we had to figure out a way how to get out of that. Coming back to the sports center. The sports center was, was one of the first facilities we reopened. And we did this uh, on a reservation basis only, if you recall. We, we reopened, I believe, sometime in June, July of 2020. And uh, in the sports center at that time, we had a really, really small crew, basically a crew that was switching on the lights and flushing the toilets to be sure that everything was working. And uh, then we had reservation only uh, access to the sports center in, in the first installments, I believe, of 20 people each time. Um, and we had to put all the fitness equipment into the gym and uh, socially distance. And we had um, part timers who were wiping down the equipment, etc. cetera. Um, and so we were trying always to, to uh, have the center uh, as much as possible uh, open and bring it back to the public. And what we realized last year in, in 2022 was that, yes, uh, we, we had reopened the facility at, at full level again. We had uh, the, uh, the, the swim gym open. We, we, had, the, we had programming back in, in, in certain areas. Uh, but what, what we also uh, identified was that, that we have to find a new balance, a new balance between uh, what, uh, what had worked in the past and what we think we need to figure out what will work in the future because our customers, our patrons did not all come back at the same time. And why I was talking, uh, the reason why I was talking about 1992 to 2020 was we had a generically grown customer base. We had folks that were starting with us uh, in, 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 uh, as baby boomers and active baby boomers who are now uh, uh, seniors working, working out in the sports center. But we also had a great uh, chunk of people who, will, who did not come back immediately. That was to be expected. Uh, because again, uh, not everyone feels comfortable sweating uh, on, on machines next to other people and having still concerns about COVID and, and uh, infection rates. So our return to normalcy was not really normal. We had not as many patrons coming back. We also understood that we had to look at how we are operating the, the sports center and we had to analyze, are we still in the right marketplace? Are we still offering uh, those type of services that our community desires and uh, that they want to have done? So I, I talked about, to you again about 1992 when, when basically the sports center was the biggest new thing on the peninsula. And uh, 2023, I shared with you how we uh, in 2018 conscientiously also looked at how we are looking at streamlining of our operations. Uh, 2019 subsequently declared a fiscal emergency. And 2022, when we looked at, at, at our operations and we looked at the, the revenue estimates for the sports center, we were saying, well, okay, uh, we can continue to uh, um, afford this facility, but we have to uh, find a way also to ensure that our products are lining up with the wishes of our community. And at that time, we went to the council, we said, here's what we want to do. Uh, here are the numbers. Uh, council agreed to that, and we um, have now completed this analysis. And again, what you will hear now are uh, 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 several uh, recommendations. You will learn also, I think, about the marketplace that uh, in which we are operating. I think there are also some very interesting data points that that we never have. Uh, that, that were timed again. That we uh, it was time for us to to look at those data points as well. And then uh, I really hope that uh, the council, after receiving this report, will ask uh, questions, uh, public will weigh in, and then we will figure out what we are doing with all the data points that, that we have collected and how we are uh, continuing to operate the, the sports center. I give away a punchline already. There is a very good um, last slide that uh, shares with you a lot of uh, good, uh, hopeful data points. Uh, so there's there's a happy ending in sight. How we are building this up, how we are creating that is, is something that, that uh, we will figure out over the next 
couple of months. So with that, uh, I introduce to you Susie Fisher. Uh, she is part of a larger team that worked with us. Uh, she works for the sports facility companies. Uh, we had basically two different teams we work with. Uh, one was a team that understands sport facilities and sports facility uh, programs and offerings and service levels, and another team that understood the financials because we also looked very deep into to the financials uh, that was part of this uh, analysis and the study. And with that, uh, Susie has a, a very interesting uh, presentation with just 18 slides. So uh, take it away. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor Council. Hans, thank you for that introduction. I wanna make sure that you can see my screen and I'm sharing with you this, my screen. Can everyone see the, yes? Yeah, okay. Screen, Susie, but we're seeing the notes screen. So oh, oh I'm so sorry. Okay, let me stop that. I apologize. Uh, give me one second. I'm so sorry. Sure. Technical. Difficulties here with the Zoom screen. Okay. And how about now? Better? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Excellent. Well, good evening. Thank you, Hans. I appreciate that. Good evening, Mayor Council. I want to thank you. For for the opportunity this evening to present the findings and recommendations of the optimization study. Almost a year's worth of dedicated and collaborative work has gone into this study with the Monterey team. It's the goal of SSC, the company that I work for, um, that this report will be a guide that will shape the future success of the Monterey Sports Center. Throughout this presentation, I'll be addressing the critical topics covered in the report. These include the scope of work and approach, the definitions of success, local and regional market data, historical financial performance, industry benchmarks, the financial forecast that incorporates our recommendations, and insights gathered throughout the process. Just a quick review of our scope of work. We kicked off the project last June and began reviewing existing data, including the local demographics, socioeconomics, and reviewing a local competition. Our team traveled to Monterey last July, where we spent team time with the Monterey Sports Center staff and stakeholders to learn about the facility, the programs, and the history. Sports facilities companies, in collaboration with the Monterey team, deployed a community engagement survey in August and September of last year, receiving approximately 400 plus votes or responses. Over the fall and winter, our team worked to develop the financial forecast in collaboration with the Monterey Sports Center team to reflect changes in monthly membership and then deliver the draft report and the optimization timeline. While the steps in the scope may, of work may appear very linear, our company utilizes a funnel approach that enables us to collect data and integrate it with the best practices and industry benchmarks to develop recommendations that are achievable and will drive operational and financial performance. This process includes the development of the definitions of success, market analysis, assessment of physical assets and operations, and a detailed financial performance analysis to establish facilities and operational strategies for recommendations. Working with the project team, we developed the following definitions of success. These definitions of success were the driving force behind the analysis and the recommendations. They are first, to ensure that the Monterey Sports Center provides first-class customer fitness, wellness, and recreation experiences while embracing community diversity through accessible, affordable membership options. To develop strategies that will embrace existing and new opportunities to enable the Monterey Sports Center to continue to be the area's leader for fitness and wellness. And finally, implement strategies to improve the operational performance of the Monterey Sports Center to reduce the reliance on the general fund while diversifying and expanding the opportunities. Next, we analyze the local, sub-regional, and regional demographics. Understanding the local, which is the 10-minute drive time, 10, 15, and 30-minute drive time, 
provides us insight into the potential membership opportunities, while exploring sub-regional and regional population and market allows us better understanding of the regional demographic trends that may impact Monterey. Over 250,000 people live within the 30 minutes of the Monterey Sports Center. And while the area within the 10 minutes of the sports center is projected to have a slight decline in population over the next 15 or five years, the 15 and 30 minute drive time populations are projected to grow slightly. These are all positive factors for the Monterey Sports Center. It's important to note that while the median age in the local region is above the median national average, which is 38.5, this coincides with the programming that's currently taking place and it needs to continue into the future with the Monterey Sports Center. An above average household income, as we look across the chart, above average household income is also positive and it shows us a willingness to pay for recreational lessons and supporting the programs that take place at the Monterey Sports Center. Next, we explored fitness trends within the region, as well as the program offerings within the Monterey Sports Center. Within the 30 minute drive time population, there's a potential for a significant number of participants in bar, Tai Chi, boot camp, cardio kickboxing, as well as aquatics. These classes that focus on specialty workouts have the potential to draw over 200,000 people. While people transition to home fitness or other fitness locations during the pandemic, people are returning to group fitness. And these are areas that we see growing, not only in your region, but regions across the country. Our team reviewed the existing service providers that offer similar assets and programs as the Monterey Sports Center. Local service providers that we reviewed included core facilities at local schools, fitness centers, including the YMCA, InShape, Anytime, Golds, Montage, aquatic fitness facilities, including Kearns, Palo, uh, the Salina Community YMCA, and day camp providers, such as Pacific Grove and the Carmel Youth Center. The 10 to 15 minute drive time population can support aquatics and the aquatics facilities in the area. The Monterey Sports Center, oh, I'm so sorry, Monterey Sports Center population that is using the, the facility now, while it is, has a higher age range, it does right, allow for increased opportunities for aquatics, fitness and fitness therapy in the pool. 4,000 children under 14 in your local drive time, your 10, 15, 30 minute um, population is a positive factor for swimming lessons and your aquatics programs. Next, we conducted a review of the financial performance of the sports center. Cost recovery for fiscal year 22-23 is expected and projected to exceed the original 50% 50, 50 projection. Growth in um, indirect expenditure categories have impacted cost recovery, and it's important to note that total payroll expenses are higher than our industry average, but understandable with your cost of living in California. Industry benchmarks for municipalities for membership that run membership-based fitness centers range from $25 a square foot to over $45 a square foot in revenue. The Monterey Sports Center has a history of performing in that high, which is that 35 to 45 top performing categories. While the total expenses as a percentage of revenue for our standard expense categories, which is the facilities, the operating, the management payroll, and the payroll and taxes are higher than the average, again, the cost of living is one of those items that we definitely consider. And so while the averages for the Monterey Sports Center are higher than the industry averages, they are comparable with what we have seen in your general region. So after we did all of our market review and all of the review of the locations and conditions and demographics, we draw upon the definitions of success and we leverage those, that data to develop a thorough review and strategies to enhance the operations with the goal of improving efficiencies, program qualities and making operations more sustainable. The strategies include recommendations to expand and enhance staff positions. These recommendations include an addition of an assistant sports center manager that would manage contractual relationships, coordinate maintenance, maintain service records, act as a manager on duty, and other duties as assigned. A front desk specialist that would be a full-time liaison 
with the community to manage all front desk operations, personnel associated with the front desk, and provide that hands-on direct customer service. As well as a transition, we'd like to request a reclass or a consideration to reclass the fitness supervisor to a wellness supervisor position that will expand and manage all wellness programs. This would include the implementation of new programs, such as wellness seminars, classes, and workshops. We recommend that the individual manage and maintain the fitness, the fitness coordinator would manage and maintain the fitness contracts, the instructor. We also recommend that a fitness coordinator be reclassified to a membership coordinator. Membership coordinator would focus on membership recruitment and retention, executing sales and marketing efforts, having targeted monthly goals, and being responsible for member engagement and promotional events throughout the year. Additional strategies to enhance operations include extending the facility hours later in the day to accommodate later classes and individuals who desire evening workouts. That was something that we saw in the survey responses that we received. Develop program specific budgets to track program cost recovery, assist with program planning and resource allocation and provide accountability and control of those programs and implement a semi-annual net promoter score to survey and assess membership satisfaction and loyalty. And finally, to expand out of school programs. Programs such as a swim camp or kinder camp could help increase the gym utilization by 10 to 15% a year. We move then to strategies to attract and retain your members. These include implementing brand standards that will provide integrity and recognition of the Mon Monterey Sports Center brand, not only across divisions within the city, but within the local and sub-regional market. Developing a dedicated annual marketing plan and budget that strategically schedules marketing efforts and promotions throughout the year and implementing a marketing effectiveness tracking system, including tracking social media engagement to determine the marketing return on investment and help to play marketing efforts moving forward. Strategies to reduce and contain cost include transition to contract and fitness wellness instructors that are specialists in their field and may be able to provide a variety of classes that are in line with popular fitness trends. Transition to co contract or custodial facility attendants who would work specified hours and schedules with the Monterey Sports Center, but the city wouldn't have to carry the full burden of their benefit cost. Transition to leased cardio equipment with a three-year replacement cycle and a monthly maintenance plan to ensure that equipment is current and working properly. Add self-checking kiosks at the front desk to assist with streamlining the check-in process. Implementing monthly financial reporting and revenue forecasting to allow the sports center staff to stay informed and make responsible budgetary decisions. And finally, establishing a policy for promotional rates and discounts that are intentional and seek to attract new members, encourage return members, or promote the Monterey Sports Center to first-time customers. Building on the strategies to reduce cost and contain cost, we recommend that Sports Center enhance revenue by growing membership by five, 15 to 30% in the next five years overall. Um, in March, 2023, the membership number was 4,424. In our five-year projections, we have included a growth of 15 or more percent for that. I want, my final or other recommendation are for to focus on teen, adult, and corporate memberships to really market to those age groups that are currently either underrepresented or not really represented in your membership structure. Ensure that membership fees are market competitive and develop new revenue streams. So repurposing the underutilized spaces that were previously offices to potential lease or concession spaces establishing an annual facility sponsorship program or advertising program within the center, and consider establishing an endowment fund, a fund that would provide a reliable and steady funding source over extended period of time for people who may want to bequeath funds to the Monterey Sports Center. Looking at the finances, by implementing the strategies noted in the optimization plan, the operational subsidy before the the bond and the debt service could decrease from approximately 2.5 million to generating 
a positive return of over $270,000. That's in year five. We did look and complete a, a five-year performa with a 20-year outlook as well. Revenue growth includes sports and gym center programs, growth in the youth camps, in basketball, both youth and adult, and in volleyball. Membership is the main generator of the revenue. We project year one growth at 15%, year two growth at 10, and then stabilizing after that. So really a big push in years one and two to increase your membership numbers. Including the bond payment and debt service, the annual subsidy could be um, approximately $350,000 in year five, which is significantly less than the 2.5 million. Furthermore, by implementing the recommendations and strategies, cost recovery could potentially improve to 94% by year five. It's important to note that staffing recommendations that we previously recommended are not included in the cost recovery projection. They may have positive or negative impacts on cost recovery, but it does, you know, it varies on different factors that we cannot determine at this point in time. And finally, I really want to thank the Monterey project team, the Monterey Sports Center staff. Throughout this project, we've noted that the Sports Center has many effective, dedicated, and successful team members. They're, they have been engaged in the process, and they are ready to help the Sports Center thrive into the future. There was a concentrated effort, and there will be needed to continue a concentrated effort to implement the strategies to increase the participation and the membership to reduce expenses and to identify viable partners, sponsors, and donors. This plan and the recommendations span multiple years. We don't want this to be a guide that sits on a shelf, but rather something that you use and move forward for the next five years. I'm delighted and enthusiastic about the progress that was made throughout the past 10 months. Uh, and I have confidence that the Monterey Sports team is on board and they are ready to engage and lead the sports center into a successful future. I think with the recommendations that we put forward, the pro forma documents that we've provided and the interaction that we've had with the team, the sports center is on the road to a successful future. Thank you. don't see this on is it on yes so thank you Susie for that terrific presentation it's been a pleasure working with you and Kaylee and the whole facilities team Andrea and I truly value your support and your expertise over the past year uh, we'd like to go to the next slide please thank you Susie As challenging as this past year has been, the Sports Center has far exceeded expectations. When we were first developing the 23 budget in January of 2022, we did not know at the time how the pandemic would affect our operations. So we originally had conservatively proposed a, a budget of just under $2 million in revenue. And Hans highly encouraged us to increase that to 2.5 million. And currently year to date, with still one month ago in the fiscal year, the sports center has generated over $2.6 million, therefore reaching our goals. Reaching over 100% of fiscal 23 revenue goals. In addition to that, as of this month, the Monterey Sports Center has reached pre-pandemic member levels with just over 8,000 members and is on track to have a historic enrollment at summer sports camp, packed group exercise classes, swimming lessons with waiting lists, booming personal training programs, and much more. This is a testament to the extremely talented and dedicated staff at the Sports Center. So I think they need a reply. I also want to thank the Parks and Recreation Commission, our entire city family, and of course, all of the Sports Center guests who visit the facility, because without all of them, we wouldn't be where we are today.
Next slide, please. I must also express gratitude to our city council for supporting infrastructure funding and setting aside reserve funds for the facility. Believe it or not, infrastructure projects help us create revenue and contribute to our success. Guests prefer to be in the facility that is clean, safe, and well-maintained. Projects like fixing the water slide, repairing locker room floors, replacing the gym curtain, resurfacing the gym and studio floors, painting the exterior, installing new operational windows and doors, all make the facility an attractive place to be by allowing guests to feel safe and at ease. Our work is not done. There's a lot more to do in the natatorium with the dehumidifier, pool replastering, interior painting, et cetera. But the council should be proud to know that these investments pay off, not only for the physical facility, but for the community as a whole. Next slide, please. The capital we infuse into the Monterey Sports Center is an investment into the community and the quality of life in the city of Monterey. The Sports Center is a community center where people of all ages and all walks of life come together under one roof to partake in healthy programs and activities that promote health and well being, stave off loneliness and depression, develop teamwork and sportsmanship, learn leadership and employment skills, and so much more. Mm -hmm. I am confident that we are on our way to develop a plan for the Monterey Sports Center to serve the community for years and years to come. Thank you. Um, Karen, it, I, I wanna pass it around to the council to ask a few questions, but I, I really wanna start off um, I think you're a, a testament to the great work that's been done with our Parks and Rec um, Department overall. I know that you've been par a participant of these programs um, since early in your life. And so um, I kind of want to get your thoughts and feelings in regards to maybe just the overall recommendations, how you feel about the direction that we should go in, um, the value of these of, of this facility. Um, I mean, if if there's a way that you maybe can speak straight from your heart, um, I know that there's um, your role that you play in the position, um, but if you could speak to that, because I I think it's it's important for somebody that that they they were developed through this process, right? And so you're you're a direct outcome, and now you're an executive in the in the city staff. So if you if you may just maybe speak freely about kind of your thoughts there. Oh, hello. I'm the, <laughs> I'm I understand. I understand completely. I should have said that. I'm Karen Larson. I'm the Parks and Recreation Director. I've grown up in this department. I consider this my family. I've spent over 35 years or starting at the age of 16 with this with this wonderful city. I think I've spent more time in city facilities and with my city family than with my own personal family and in my own homes. So I really do see you guys as my family. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, I did jot down a couple notes because I just had somebody ask me in an agenda meeting um, at work about Karen, like, what is the problem? Like, how is this so hard all the time? Why, why are you always trying to struggle with this? And I just said, you know, the sports centers had the challenge of being two things at one time. We are tasked to be a recreational community center and a revenue generating fitness facility. And this is a balance that we have been wrestling with for 30 years. I myself worked within the sports center for about 17 years myself. So I know what it's like to have that pressure to be offering services and programs at an affordable price, but also generating revenue to cover the cost of running the facility. I think it's important to keep in mind the social capital, uh, the investment in our culture at the same time that we consider financial or business benefits of the sports center. Uh, the original uh, vision for the facility was a swim gym, a location for people of all ages, all economic backgrounds um, to participate in aquatics and gym programs. So everything from swimming lessons to basketball leagues, 
And the facility wasn't designed to be profitable. It was designed to be recreational. So, uh, recreators often look at service through the public service lens. Um, we we look at what are the social fabric outcomes, right? Mm -hmm. So, we have to our what is the social capital that is built from the investment of our talent, our time, and our money? And many times the answers can't be quantified, right? It's things like, how much crime did we prevent by offering a safe place for, for, for teens to go after school, right? Um, the other one I like to use a lot when I, when people are asking me about this at barbecues and things is, how many heart attacks did we prevent, right? Yeah. By, no. Sorry, sorry. I know. Real quick, real quick. Mm -hmm. I, I know that you all are enthusiastic, but it, mm -hmm. it, it will help because I know I imagine that a lot of you want to talk and we have to end at six o'clock. So maybe hold your applause for her until she's done with her entire statement. Please. I just want to make sure she can get all of it in. I guys, I didn't expect this. I, <laughs> I'm kind of nervous. I'm Not to say that she doesn't deserve all the applause, okay. actually. So. Okay. so anyway, how many heart attacks have we prevented by providing affordable exercise classes and equipment? How many cases of loneliness and isolation have we prevented by creating a community for others to meet people and make friends? Um, at the Sports Center, we're doing more than building muscles. Okay, we're, we're building a community there and it makes Monterey a great place to live and work and visit. It brings a diverse group of people together um, at a location where these people wouldn't normally converge, right? So we, we make it look easy. The sports center team really does about how easy it looks to have six months olds, two year olds, teenagers and seniors all under one roof. And it really is not easy always to make everyone happy. They can't decide on, you know, the temperature, the doors open, the doors closed, all of these things, <laughs> right? So um, it's, it's challenging. And we have all different people from lawyers, doctors, teachers, military personnel, uh, teens, construction workers, airline pilots. I mean, you name it. We have the wide, a wide variety of people and they connect on the basketball court. They connect in the pool. They connect in the group exercise classes, um, even in the locker room, right? And it's amazing what you talk to someone when you're wearing a towel, like, you know. Um, <laughs> so these connections lead to a strong sense of community, which leads us to a more resilient city overall. I truly believe that. And so... I just think it's important for us to keep in mind the social capital and the investment in our culture. Um, at the same time, we consider the financial and the business benefits of the sports center, because in my opinion, the investment we make is priceless, honestly. I, th I think it's a, a, when I hear about, oh, you know, it may cost us $2 million. When I think about these things, preventing someone's heart attack and having a healthier lifestyle, to me, we're, we're getting a bargain. I, I, I think our investment is well worth it. So that's my personal opinion from my professional experience. Awesome. Thank you. Sorry. Applause. <laughs> so, so I, I heard two things out of two things out of that stuck out for me. Um, one, and I think maybe is our new tagline for the sports center is we build more than muscle. Um, <laughs> that was a good one. Um, but, but also there's this, uh, point that you made and it's important that we're, we are trying to find, strike this balance between the social and the financial piece. And obviously the social piece is what's driving us. Um, but we can't forget the financial piece. And so how do we strike that right balance? It's a, it's a delicate balance. And I think that's kind of where part of this conversation is it's not a cut and dry thing. This isn't to say that we're, um, you know, going to, uh, you know, move forward with a purely financial uh, mindset, um, but it, it's, it's a delicate balance. So I really look forward to the public comment and figuring out how do we um, strike that right balance there. Um, okay, with that, I'm gonna ask the council, um, for if they have any questions, I'm gonna ask you to limit it to two for now. And if you have more, you can ask it after public comment. I just wanna make sure that we give enough time for the public to provide some input. So who wants to start us off? Councilmember Hoffa? 
Yeah, thank you so much for uh, sharing your comments and your thoughts. Um, I have a question about our staff. And, um, you know, we had to make some really hard decisions when we were looking at that, you know, $30 million deficit. And um, hardest decision I've ever had to make in this seat was to let people go. Um, and I'm just wondering, of the folks that worked at the, you know, in the Parks and Rec and in the Sports Center, how many of them have come back? How many of them uh, do we know might still be interested in coming back? So kind of what's the situation of the staffing relative to the um, COVID cuts? As far as the Sports Center, uh, we went down to three full-time employees and we are at six right now. So we, uh, at one point, at one point when I was there, we had 35 full-time people. Mm -hmm. We were at 28 at the time when the pandemic hit. Okay. So we're even now with six, we're still down like 29 compared to where we were. So, yes, so my question, my second question would be kind of where do you think we need to be in order to sort of um, fulfill the mission, which you, I think, eloquently expressed? You know, do we need 35? Is that sort of, you know, where, what do we, what do you think we need? Because there were just a couple positions highlighted in the report, but it seems like we're going to need a lot more than that. So could you speak to what you think we need in terms of staffing to get, uh, to, to achieve the mission? The exact number is difficult to say because it'll depend on what programs and services we bring back. Uh, we definitely need more if we want to bring more programs and services and expand ours. It's very challenging for the existing staff right now. They have a very large part-time staff. We can continue to hire more part-time. But like I said, our, our facility is very unique and we have people of all different ages and abilities. We have people with special needs. We have people um, with different physical ailments and things like that. Uh, we have considerably um, an elderly population that uses us and they need special care and attention at times. And so do youth and teens actually um, need attention. So uh, supervision is key and uh, support is key, but it really will depend on what services and programs we bring back, especially if we want to expand hours or bring things like the kids zone back and other things like that. We've really um, have gone from a, a full-time professional cleaning staff to part-time team that is doing an exceptional job for the, the training you have. Uh, and, but it, it is challenging. We don't have people cleaning all night like we used to. And maybe that's one of the, the challenges that we'll have to look at is if we decide to do like a contracted out cleaning team at the end of the night and those types of things. I'm afraid to get too deep in the weeds right now um, because again, it will depend on what service and programs we bring back. Thank you, really appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to um, speak to, I think, one of your questions, which was about um, staff that have been laid off. Um, we, um, as Karen said, I think there were 28 full-time or FTE that were laid off. We now have six back. Some of those um, employees have been rehired um, specifically at the conference center um, and a few other areas of the city, um, but many of them have not. And my understanding is a lot of them would love to come back. Um, the staff at the Sports Center is incredibly dedicated and loyal to the community. Um, and so I think that if positions were available and people could be reinstated, that would be a positive. Um, I'll get a little bit more in the weeds than Karen on staffing. Um, my professional opinion is we need to bring on those two positions immediately, the assistant Sports Center manager and the front desk special uh, specialist. Those are needed now. We do not have enough staff to properly supervise the facilities. Um, my other concern is we've raised fees 35% since 2019, but we have fewer hours, fewer swim lessons, fewer group exercise classes, and I don't see how we can continue charging that fee if we're not providing the service. The, uh, the other thing I'd like to add is that we're also very fortunate that some of those people on that layoff list have also agreed to come back part-time, and they have really helped us be successful. If they had not come back with their years and years of full-time service to help us over this hump, 
I don't know if we would be where we are today. They really, it has been their dedication and their service and their experience that they have brought back out of their dedication and loyalty to us as a team and to the city and to the sports center as a facility. So we're very lucky and fortunate that they were willing to come back and help us to do that. Thank you. And uh, if, if any of those staff members are listening, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate it. Okay, who wants to go next? All right, Councilmember Barber. <laughs> All right. First of all, thank you so much for all that you do. Um, you know, I personally um, <laughs> am a grateful to the Sports Center for all that they've done. Uh, my son used to work there as well as a personal trainer um, in all transparency. And I really appreciate that he doesn't work there now because he's in San Diego. Um, but because after he graduated, but I'm just really grateful to the Sports Center and what they have done for the community and for the youth because he was a college student. And so I think um, seeing more of that would be great. Um, so my question is to uh, Susie. Um, you talked about the five-year projection to put it in the um, put a $271,676 profit for a five-year. Is there a tracking in that that you're that that is that is uh, discussed, like a, a year tracking uh, of how we could be able to help to see that come into fruition? Yes, ma'am. There's a five-year plan, and each one of the five years in the pro forma is spelled out. So the pro forma reads left to right, and there's tracking that you can see with the recommended number of program participants for each program that we looked at, as well as the membership for each year through years one through five. Okay, so I guess what I'm saying is, do we would we be able to set something up where that could actually be um, reviewed like a check and balance thing to be reviewed to make sure that it's on track. I see the performer. I see that. Yes, ma'am. And that's one of those items that Karen and her team are very much well aware of what those items are for each year's projections. They definitely can set up benchmarks to set those for each year and make those their goal as part of their budget goal or part of their operational goal for each year. Okay, thank you. And so also, so now I had a, a question dealing, not with Susie, but Karen, dealing with the current membership. I know they said it's 8,000 now. What was it, um, was that was that pre-pandemic? Yes, ma'am. So it's 8,000 now, which was pre-pandemic. And was that the most that the um, sports center has had? This is all inclusive with that one question. You know, I, I, yeah. I see that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to go back and look at our records for sure. Mm -hmm. I and Dre may know, but I think at one point we may have even been at, at ten, close to ten thousand members at one point. Okay, thank you. No. I saw uh, Councilmember Smith's hand go up, so I'll pass it to you, sir. No, thank you very much. Just one question on the presentation packet, page seventy-three. Susie, you outline and list the debt service. Uh, it's listed as uh, $541,635. Uh, this is probably a question more for the city manager or the finance director. Don't want to go into a great number of detail, but overflying the details, remind me what is the length of that bond service? How long will that payment of $541,000 be obligated to um, the debit side of the balance sheet? It's, it's about nine more years, sir. Okay, nine more years. Okay. Um, I'm counting every day, every day. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yes, and, and certainly now in today's environment, there's no opportunity for refinancing those things. So um, maybe just as a side note, that would be good to have that included with our finance director's um, you know, mid or final budget as we proceed through. Just would like to be reminded uh, more of the details about that debt service. And I'll save the time, rather hear from the folks that are there. I don't have any other questions. Thank you, Mayor. Just have one question, uh, and thank you for the uh, presentation. Um, page 15 of the uh, study, uh, there's a um, table that uh, lists the various uh, fitness activities. Um, I'm curious if those are activities that the sports center currently offers, or would that be the uh, list of activities recommended? 
I'm sorry, what page, Mr. Garcia? Sure, it's uh, page 15. It was what we also presented in the slide with bar. The one that says G data fitness in the region, that Correct. one? Correct. Packet page 31, yes, thank you. Uh, so I, I know a lot of those we do offer. Yeah, it's a combination of both. We offer, yeah, we offer almost all of those on there. Rowing machines, kettlebells, cross training. Um, I don't know about dance, but we have bar, we have boot camp. Yeah, we have Zumba. Yes. Cardio kickboxing. Do we still have that right now? No, because no. for us, that was like, it was less popular for a while, right? So we, we, yeah, so that's a 90s trend for us. Yeah. In our, in our experience with us, you know, but we did have that for a very long time. I remember uh, Lori got quite good with her boxing gloves and everything. So. Okay, so most of these, but there's some yes, sir. part of the recommendation. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. I, I want to get back to, um, I think, a question a little bit that um, Dr. Barber was getting to. Um, I noticed in the report that it identified that the revenue from fiscal year 18-19 was $4.5 million, um, but we're tracking for $3 million this year with the same amount of membership. So I'm just wondering... I knew that would come up, yeah, because <laughs> because um, I had that same question. Because I'm like, how can this be? That we have, Why? Right. <laughs> um, and a lot of it is we also used to offer a lot more recreational programming, right? So we would have more teachers. We had more staff that offered more classes that also brought in more revenue. So that that's where our our gap is. Unless Andrew, yeah, Andrew can speak more. This is a very awkward setup. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Yes, we did a full analysis because when we uh, ran the report and saw that we had over 8,000 members again, why isn't the revenue matching up? Um, there's a couple of things. From a membership standpoint, the 2019 numbers include the auto pay program for the entire year. So we had 1,500 um, members on auto pay. They were paying that fee every single month. We just reinstated our auto pay program with our new software in December. And it's been kind of a slow rollout as we learn the system a little bit better and we encourage people to get on that program. So one of those 8,000 people that we're counting may have just enrolled yesterday and we only have one month of revenue. Okay. Um, our drop-in revenue is down um, about 35%, I think. Um, and I think that that might be due to increase in fees and also less hours and less service. So if you get off work at six o'clock, you know, you may not come down and pay the drop-in fee of $14 if you only get two hours to work out. And then as Karen said, a lot of our um, recreational programs are down between 25 and 35%, mostly due to staffing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. That was helpful. All right. So that's technically my second question because I started off asking a question. So with that, we will take it to public comment. Can I just see by a show of hands who actually plans on coming to the mic? So I seen maybe about 20 folks. And if I allowed everybody to speak for three minutes, that we would be, it would be out of time. So I'm going to ask you to limit it to a minute and a half. Um, but this isn't the end of the conversation, right? We're not making any decisions tonight. And if you would like to provide more public comment, you can send an email to the entire council that will go into the public record. And if we do make any policy decisions, it will be coming back in front of the council where you can come back and speak at that point as well. So let's go ahead and open it up for public comment and we're gonna limit to a minute and a half. Good afternoon, Mayor, City Council, City Manager and staff. My name is Ellen McEwen. I am a retired physician and spent 30 years taking care of the health and wellness of the wonderful residents of the Monterey area. As a Parks and Recreation Commissioner, I continue looking after the health and well being of our community. Why parks and recreation? Because it is through sports and group physical training that we learn to be the best and health, our, we learn to be our best and healthiest selves. The Monterey Sports Center is where children learn sportsmanship, cooperation, and teamwork. They learn how to avoid drowning. Through sports and fitness training, teens learn to navigate their growing bodies. Some sign on to teach younger kids. 
Through that, they learn patience and compassion. With our water and land-based programs, seniors improve their balance, strength, and mobility. These are essential for fall prevention and maintaining independence. The sports center accommodates everyone. Moreover, the camaraderie and friendships found at the sports center erase loneliness. Our U.S. Surgeon General said, quote, being socially disconnected has a similar effect on mortality as smoking up to 15 cigarettes per day. I do want to thank you for the new front doors, the windows, and the great new exterior paint job, but I want to ask to restore our pre-pandemic programs. As outlined in the um, SFA report, we need to address the needs of working people, millennials, and Generation Z folks. Just say it. <laughs> My, my name's Tom. I'm Tom LaDuke. I'm the tag team here. And okay, uh, to continue, specifically, restore the kids zone. This is where the younger children can have super, supervised safe play while their parents work out. Two, restore the pre-pandemic extended hours so working people can get to the gym before or after work. Three, restart the physical therapy program. There's so few water-based programs available and they're beneficial. It's a natural fit to have physical therapy at a swim gym. It was a wonderful way to introduce the injured and incapacitated to the healing effects of prescriptive movement. Restart the cafe. This made a huge difference to her when she was working in the, in the ER. She could get a 5.45 a.m. fitness class, shower, have a cup of coffee and a muffin for breakfast before going to the hospital. Without the cafe, it would have been impossible to squish that in. It was helpful in establishing friendships. You could have a moment and a snack with good people. We need more staff to implement those programs. Gyms across California of this size usually have at least eight to 10 full-time staff. Please, please start the restoration process for the health and well-being of our communities. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Dennis McCarthy. I'll be quick. I have three minutes. I'm going to try to jump around real, real quick. Um, I'm here as an individual, but also I've been on your Parks and Recreation Commission for almost 20 years. So I've had the benefit of seeing that sports center from the time it started. Um, and what is that sports center? Hans has talked about a, a, a fitness facility. But we've heard it's really a community center. That's what it is. My kids were raised by the staff at that sports center because I have a two. We have a two two members in our family work. My kids were there, learned teamwork, learned inclusiveness, learned what's right. And this is the one thing I wanted to say because I overheard this the other day at the sports center in the hall from two women who were older than me, so they were older. <laughs> um, and and what they said was about this um, sports center and this meeting. I hope they don't screw it up, okay? It's our life. And that really is important. Second point, and I'm jumping to what the mayor said, you gotta balance the fiscal side of it. All I wanna say is, and you've heard it already here today, is when you look at the fiscal side of it, okay, what this staff has done with a skeleton group has been amazing. It's really performed to 100.3% of what it was supposed to make in terms of its budget target. Where does that leave us in 15 seconds? Two things. One, moving forward, hopefully you're going to implement and invest in some of the things that's been talked about. Follow your staff's recommendation. They know what they're doing. Increase the staff, give them the resources to make it happen. Thanks. Dan Turner, I live in Monterey. You know, sometimes you have to spend money to make money. The city won't hire new people for the sports center because they say it's only bringing in about 70% of its expenses, and it used to cover 85 to 90% of its expenses in the before times. And they say if it brings its numbers up, uh, then they'll hire more people. Well, this becomes a catch-22 because without more employees, we can't open the child care facility, and doing that would certainly bring in more members who can't join now because they have small children. Also, they could reopen the snack bar, which, if allowed to sell real candy bars and other snacks, oh. would be a real moneymaker, as it used to be before its menu was limited to only healthy foods. If I want to reward myself with a 214-calorie Hershey bar after I've just burned 215 calories in a spin class, 
ain't nobody's business if I do. The snack bar could also sell merchandise. And I know something about merchandise. You sell it for two to three times what you pay for it. That can't help but bring in money. Sports Center has only six full-time employees. And before times it had 26 or 28, whatever. Yet the city, city still charges it the same amount for things like IT support as it did when there were four times as many employees. That isn't fair, and an adjustment should be made. Sometimes there isn't the need for all the hours of maintenance that are charged to the sports center, and yet it's still charged for those hours. Am I out of time? <laughs> and the sports center isn't just a place where teens can play basketball and kids can learn how to swim. And those activities are very important, but it's also a place that combats the uh, epidemic of loneliness that Dan, affects our Dan, Dan, it was entertaining though. Thank you for so much for your comments. I love you, Dan. Okay, here we go. Um, thank you again, uh, council members and our staff and of the city of Monterey. You. The sports center, I agree, is a tremendous community center, and we all benefit. I've been using it for probably 25 years. My point is a little different from most that you're going to hear tonight, I think. How can we lower costs around operations? How can we lower our PG&E bill? That's what I want to know. How can we make the sports center a model of sustainability? There must be a way to harness all that pumping of, <laughs> can we harness that energy and, and run the lights? Can we retrofit from natural gas to solar power? That's what I'm wondering. And I wanna begin that conversation. Thank you. Lynn Walder from Pacific Grove. First and foremost, um, the Monterey Sports Center is, for me, the best community gathering place that I've ever come to know. I lost my wife four and a half years ago, and to hear children laughing and playing and enjoying their swim lessons lightens my heart. Each visit. This past Friday evening, which I understand is family night, is just a hoot. I watched young kids navigating the obstacle course and I laughed out loud. And that's a rare experience for me. I have, uh, I have a lot of memories that center around my loss, but by coming to the sports center, which I do almost every day, it each time refreshes me and renews my hopes and my dreams to go forward and to thrive. And that's what the sports center has done for me. So I want you to know that I have trained as an exercise physiologist at UC Davis. I've worked in hospitals. I worked in sports medicine centers. I've worked in academia. And when the moment I walked into the facility, I noticed professionalism day in and day out. I have never seen a staff in a public facility like we have here at the Monterey Sports Center. I compliment you all, and I hope you maintain that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Robin Selden. I live in Pacific Grove. Um, I started my health journey, and I wound up at In Shape. And then I learned about the sports center and the pool. And it wasn't about money. I switched. And I was there before the pandemic. I was one of the few Lori had out on the deck and sweating. Um, since the pandemic's over, I'm not comfortable in the classes yet because it's too tight, but I do use that pool and the water aerobics classes. And there is a huge group of us every morning. We need more. We need them in the afternoon. We need more variety. We had a, a water Zumba class and I thought the men weren't going to like it. They loved it. We had a blast. So please keep it going. And I would ask one thing, when she talked about sustainability, I would love to see a stop to single use plastics in the building. It's tough not to let people bring it in, but at least staff not use them to set an example. You did put in the water filler. So thank you, please keep my pool.
Uh, hello, my name is Lance Wright. Uh, I've lived in Pacific Grove since 1983. After caring for my parents for 10 years, I decided I needed to learn not to fall down. And so I came to the Monterey Sports Center and uh, the group fitness classes were really great. There's a sense of community. There's a sense of inclusion, despite your ability. And I was able to regain my fitness, so much so that I became a part-time instructor, one of which was let, I was let go with many others during COVID, which that was fine. And I've since come back. And I noticed on your chart, you didn't have yoga, which I teach. <laughs> and we have many classes in that. I would also like to bring your attention to the part-time instructors, some of which only teach one hour. Uh, it's a great community. Uh, life does get in the way of work. We get sick, we have to go on leaves, we have family emergencies. The current staff takes care of each other and the patrons. We, we know each other, we substitute when needed, we keep the classes going. I noticed one of the recommendations was to maybe contract that out. So just think about the team that you've got now, how effective they are and whether that might be good condition. I was gonna talk about all the other things that people have said so eloquently, but I thought I would bring that up. Thank you for the time. Thank you very much. Uh, um, Mr. Mayor, if, if I just may interject, I think Lance, you are also the volunteer out at the Salomar, is that correct? Uh, yeah, and, and picking up trash, I think that is part of your job. Are you doing that as well as a volunteer? Volunteer for Pacific Grove, and I do it on my own. I've been doing it for almost two and a half years. Yes, and I... I have two $50 bills. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I, I just, uh, I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to uh, highlight that Lance, uh, your your contributions there. I see you every weekend there, and uh, I want to say I appreciate it, and I, I want to start a group like that in Monterey as well. But thank you for what you're doing there as a volunteer as well. Unaccustomed as I am to public speaking, oh. I want to first acknowledge Dr. Willer, who we will not have at our running our facility as of tomorrow. This is a tremendous letdown. She's She has her finger on the pulse of what's going on at the sports center and with the patrons. So I think it's a damn shame that we've lost her and it's money. Secondly, I'm all in favor of lots of this stuff. I think we should have the cafe open. Seems crazy not to. They're going across the street to buy their coffee at $5 a pop, we have just as good coffee. I think I'd like to see more yoga. I'm I'm now, I was a baby boomer, now I'm an, a senior. I don't know when the hell that happened. Anyway, I think that the staff is superb. Every one of them. What I miss about having part-time with having full-time staff is, I would come in and they'd go, hi Elaine, how you doing? You know, you get acknowledged in a way that you don't make that same connection with part-time people. They probably would do it, but you, you're not, they're not with us as often. So I want to, first of all, thank Dr. Willer for everything that she's done. She has been a joy. And I think it's a damn shame that we have lost her. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, good afternoon. My name is Pat Rutowski, and I live in Pacific Grove. Um, first, as a parent, I find that the sports center is an incredibly important place. It's one of the only places that you can have swim lessons from a very early age through multiple levels. I also am a regular participant in water aerobic classes, and I know that many of my friends during pandemic did not have any kind of exercise that they did otherwise especially for teachers and older people, that's really important. And the final thing that hasn't been spoken to a group that uses the sports center, and it's one of the only places they can do what they need to do, and that's the homeless. And I know we have women that use the gym for their showers and they can pay the rate for seniors 
and they're able to afford that, keep clean and also keep fit. So that's an important group. I don't know how big it is, but I know it's there. And I don't think anyone else has spoken to that. So thank you. Thank you for everything you do. Mayor, Council, thank you so much for entertaining all of us here with our, our input and the, the expert analysis. Uh, I want to commend the analysis, especially with the, the, the point of the expansion of the staff, the support and expansion of the staff, I believe, to our highest priority for all the wonderful work that these people have done. They make people feel grateful to have the opportunity to be there and thankful. I'm one of those here that have had the opportunity to go to many other gyms, and I wouldn't go anyplace else because I feel welcome when I come there and when I feel like I'm a better person when I leave. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Shalina Crandall from Pacific Grove. I just moved here and I um, would like to be the voice for some moms and dads who would like to work out with a place with children, um, a place where our children can be. I was ready to get a membership and um, I've got four kids in school. So I was excited to go join the classes. And then I realized there wasn't a kid zone and I have a toddler. So I would love to um, join and have a safe place for my toddler while I work out. And I, I was hoping to see more people here as well, but they're probably at home taking care of the toddlers. So thank you. Um, hello everyone. Hey, Joe, Connie, I told you I'd make it get, Hey, those are the morning people. Um, my name is Josh Harris. Um, I, I understand your business model is like the YMCA. I uh, started there in Reading, uh, work, uh, cleaning at night, worked my way up to facility manager. And what it is, is what I'm seeing and what we're all here for is love. This is, this is my second family. Everyone sees me there. And so I have a few recommendations. One of them is I am uh, here for the bodybuilders in the community. And uh, we do need a multi-gym. There is a cable machine in the main weight, weight area, but a multi-gym holds up to eight people. It would fit, I, I didn't do official measurements, but it could, instead of having two people do cables, it can hold eight. And there is no uh, seated cable row at all in the building. And that's essential to bodybuilding. There would be two cable pull downs, two seated cable rows, and then two tricep extensions and a fly machine all in one. The other thing is, is I just graduated Chico State Business Management, and I would like, well, thank, thank God, I would like to, actually, I was interested in, in having a business at the cafe or, you know, cleaning at night. And if you need cleaning, I'm your guy, you know, right? right? Yeah. And I would, I feel like giving that to the community, like a safe person in the community, a responsible person in the community, someone that does have that love would be essential to help. Thank you. Hi, right, good afternoon. My name is Louis Alexander II. I've been born and raised here. I'm a volunteer at the Monterey Bay Aquarium for 15 years. I'm currently volunteering with the Amare um, Coast Guard Auxiliary. You know, what makes this city great is this community that we have. We have generated so much love and so much dynamic tension here. We have created a level of support and the Monterey Sports Center has testified to that. I'm not running for office now. I mean, it's just, <laughs> but you know, it's just, it's really good that we have this form. Take a moment in time to say thank you to the staff, to the mayor, to the leadership that's here because that's what matters right now. Uh, I chose to live here. I've lived a lot, of way, a lot of places around the world, but I call this place my home because of the family and the things that we produce here. I mean, it's, there's a formula here that works. And maybe one day I might sit up there on the, on the stage over there. But at the meantime, I'm just going to say thank you and continue the good work. Hi, I'm Susan Morris. I'm retired from CSUMB, and I'm a newcomer. I've only been here 30 years. And uh, I'm not, uh, I'm a resident of the unincorporated area of Carmel. And I do want to make the point that those of us who are not from Monterey pay more. So we're part of your bottom line, the budget. But I really want to reinforce what you said about the social capital that's involved. I taught economics at CSUMB and the, the uh, 
the cost, as has been said, the cost to the community of not having a sports center. And I really think we'd do better if we called it a health and wellness center, because that's what it is. It's a whole community center. It's not, we shouldn't be competing with the sports, the, the paid, the money-making sports programs here and there. Um, I think we need to understand it's okay if we don't, if we don't make a bottom line profit because the profit that it, the, that the program is providing is incredible. And as the gentleman spoke about losing a mate in the sports center getting you through, it has been the single thing. It's got me through that. So thank you. The Honorable Mayor. Well, the first thing, thank you for what you do and the time that you take to serve the city. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, now I'm going to talk to the group behind me, because I know what you're talking about. This is a process, and you're going to go through a process, and eventually down at the end, you're going to come with some resolution. Now I want to turn around and talk to these people behind me, because I think it's important that you understand that this is a process. This is the first part of the process. Don't just let it go. Stay with the process, be here like you're here, like you're here today, and let them let them understand what you're saying. You want that sports center and you want it run, you want it run right. Be here and tell them that every time they go through the process. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Patrick, more from the heart. MS, MSC is the best thing to happen to Monterey. It took great planning, leadership, and gifts of donations from local businesses and from many who are here today expressing your support. Family, this is what MSC is all about. We are a community strong and growing. Our sports center is the hub for people of all walks of life. It is the perfect little oasis for people to relax, work out, get away from everyday stress, see familiar faces to say, just say hi or carry on a conversation about life, family, sports, or news. Yes, MSC is the best thing to happen to Monterey. What has the Monterey Sports Center meant, for, uh, meant to me? Well, I joined here opening day, 10th in line. The best thing to happen to me since I joined, <clears throat> December 8th, 1992. I met Maki, and we got married three months later. Woo! We have Danovan, our 13-year-old son, is the best thing to happen to us. I have made best friends here and acquaintances galore. I cannot put a price on the many special days I have ex experienced. Admittedly, I am a sports center junkie. Can't wait to spend time here and be a part of our supporting our community. I have seen growth from our youth, young, the youngsters who have had no place to go, if not for MSC, a place to stay out of trouble, youth who have grown to become upstanding adults. Our youth have learned an education here through hard knocks, wisdom from their peers and guidance from adults. Their futures will be brighter because of the MSC experience. Our Monterey Sports Center, the city's crown jewel, will never be what it is, once was. Through the support of Monterey city leaders and our growing family, it will be better. Thank you, Monterey. Okay. Uh, hello, my name is Sean. I'm here from Monterey, and I'm here to kind of talk to the volleyball community. Um, we only have one night a week, one court at the moment. And I know for a fact that people are not coming because there is only one court. We've got people who are playing who are 90 pounds on the same, you know, right next to try to pass balls from someone who is 200 pounds and it's creating kind of a negative environment for everyone. Um, you know, we've only got this one opportunity. It's also kind of only word of mouth. It's not kept on uh, the website for any particular reason, not sure. Um, and unfortunately, I've been there when we've also had more people waiting on the sideline to play a game than are on the remaining two basketball courts that are being kept open solely for basketball. It's fine to have basketball, but this is one night, one time, word of mouth, and we have the people. I'd like to see the community not die simply because of negative experiences. We've got people who are coming in and I've talked to them. They've actually talked to me and brought it up who come in from Watsonville. They come in from Santa Cruz. I even know someone who comes in from Gilroy because there isn't an opportunity for them in Santa Cruz. And they don't particularly wanna to go to the South Bay, uh, but a lot of them are not coming in, not paying the drop-in fee because it has been not a very fun experience for all of them. Um, so hopefully 
we can work that, keep the community going, keep it building, especially with word of mouth right now and leading into other things. And I know we've also increased revenue factually, actually, which is kind of funny. So cheers. Thank you. Hello, my name is Cindy Vieira. I'm the former Recreation and Community Services Manager for the City of Monterey. I've been retired five years. I worked for the city for 33. I was one of the people on the committee to build the Monterey Sports Center. And I just want to emphasize that when it was built, it was never to break even. It was to bring 75 cents on the dollar. We've always up to the pandemic have brought more than 75 cents to the dollar, but it took staff and hard work of which you have people who work more than 40 hours a week, give their free time, but that's what we enjoy to do. I'm retired. I'm still here to help behind the scenes. And I think it's sad that we put a price on recreation because it is the wellness of the community. So to sit here and I understand I worked when we brought 90 cents on the dollar, but we had staff. You cannot bring in extra money if you don't have the staff. And so I know it's hard and you have to decide who go, is allowed to come back and who's not. But if you want to bring in the revenue and that's what you're taxing the sports center with, then you need to make sure that they, along with recreation for the community centers, have staff. And I have eight minutes left and thank you, Mayor and Council. Do I get her extra minutes? <laughs> Hi, I'm Kay Russo, the former Park Recreation and Community Services Director. I hired these people. This is my dream. These are the people. This is what we wanted to do. Never, never did we say this facility was supposed to be self-sufficient. How do you do that to a family? They can barely afford to put their kids there. The senior citizens that we've had in our program, the handicapped people, the homeless, we're here, recreations to serve the people. The city of Monterey has been great. I worked there 47 years and I loved every moment of it. And I told Hans, I'm gonna give him a bad time because it's time for the council and the city to stop trying to charge everything off to recreation. Do you do that to your library? God, no. To your museum, police fire, come on. We're a municipality. You are the people here to help the community. And I am so proud of the Monterey Sports Center and the staff and the goals and objectives that we've achieved. So please, as Mary Albert said, it's a long process. Please keep coming to the meetings and don't put the debt on the sports center to bring the money back. What services are you providing? It's wrong and you know it. Thank you for all your help. Well, I'm not even going to try to uh, beat that act. Congratulations. Um, some of you probably don't know this about me, but I've been involved in aquatic sports for most of my life. I coached under renowned Olympic coach Pete Coutinho. I coached alongside renowned Olympic coach um, Jim Goffrin from Stanford. And I'm currently coaching alongside eight-time Olympic coach Mark Temple. And there's nothing richer in community fabric or richer in social capital than aquatic team sports. And this is something that's missing from the sports center lineup. I'd like to impress the council with three things. The swimming pool at the sports center, though it is beloved, it's not being fully utilized. There is a large and vibrant swimming and aquatic sports community that is underserved locally and largely missed in the pro forma that you received tonight. Opportunities exist to contract with local aquatics clubs and service providers that would raise revenues for the sports center, 
keep the pool a, a community open to community participation while also increasing sports center offerings. The pro forma essentially missed the local swimming community, which I have to tell you is not served well in the Monterey Peninsula area. We actually have swimmers driving to Hollister in order to find a, a pool to work out in. So I hope you'll consider uh, speaking to existing service providers and see what they have Thank to you. say. Thank you, Timothy. Thanks. Uh, good afternoon, uh, uh, Mayor Councilman. Uh, three points I'd like to make. I've been coming to the Sports Center for 30 years, and the three points are these. What sets the Monterey Sports Center apart from other exercise facilities and gyms is that it is truly a community gathering spot and um, uh, has an emphasis in, you know, upon the family. Uh, and more than anything else, uh, above and beyond every, every other exercise facility, it is very well maintained and it's clean. And so as you move forward with your budget there, uh, budgetary decision making, please keep in mind, please don't compromise and enhance those programs that will maintain the community uh, um, uh, the community perception that we have at its community center to please maintain the cleanliness and the uh, upkeep of the machines. That is what really sets the sports center apart from others. Uh, I've been to the other gyms and I always want to come back to the Monterey Sports Center because of those qualities, particularly the fact that it is truly a community gathering spot. So as you go forth and uh, uh, re reinstitute the programs, uh, just, just, I just want you to keep that in mind. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm a fairly new member of the gym and new to the community, but I want to challenge all you guys to get down there and see what you're not experiencing because it is a great community. And uh, to re retain good staff, you have to pay them. So make sure you guys are doing that. Uh, good evening, Mayor and uh, Councilman, um, Council members. Uh, my name is Brett Michael. I'm a professor at the Naval Postgraduate School. I used to live in Monterey, but we moved to Pebble Beach, but we're just right next door. Um, but the reason I'm here, even though I got up at five o'clock this morning to start my first meeting, is that I consider everybody here to be family. I recognize most of you, but I don't know their names, but I feel a sense of community. And I'd really like to see the, the programs come back uh, to the what they were um, pre-pandemic. And my son works as a lifeguard and swim instructor there, and he loves it. It's part of his extended family as well. So um, that's all I have to say. Thanks. Hi, my name is Renee Monrad. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. And um, first I wanna say thank you to council members and staff. Uh, I would like to speak to the uh, mental health aspect and ask you to consider the mental health aspect of the of the uh, sports center. Um, I do uh, recommend and direct my clients to practice self care and exercise, practice mind body spirit through yoga, Pilates. I myself, as a provider, uh, need to practice that myself, and so I do want to share that. Um, I think it's really important to consider the mental health in this community as well. Secondly, I want to share a little story about my own um, my own experience at the sports center. I had torn rotator cuffs in my shoulder. I got frozen shoulder, went to about three different um, uh, doctors, and all told me that I needed to have surgery on my rotator cuffs. I ended up going to an aqua zumba class one day. I couldn't stand my shoulder hurt so bad. So I went to the Zumba, Aqua Zumba class and just slowly I worked it. I also worked with a um, hydrotherapist, hydrotherapy therapist. Before I knew it, I didn't have to have surgery. I have full range of motion and it helped me tremendously. So I'd like to, con I'd like you to consider um, continuing. And I believe it or not, I have the group schedule from January 6, 2020 that I don't know why I kept. And I have the group exercise uh, uh, classes from this year 
the, the most recent, 63 classes are offered right now as opposed to 128 classes that were offered before the pandemic. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ron Shank. I'm a former councilman of Pacific Grove. I've been in your shoes. I know what it's like. You have a real gem here, a real treasure in the Monterey Sports Center. I'm not going to ask you council people, have you been there other than to look? Have you experienced what these people are talking about? If you haven't, I don't really believe you're in a position to vote on it properly. I know that I can't, when I was on council, be at all those things that I should have been at. You can't either, I understand that. But you should find a way, as important as this is, find a way for yourselves to experience what these people are talking about. You have such a gem, please keep it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tony Campbell, and I just, I mean, the child care would be great to see come back. I wasn't there pre-pandemic. We just started in September, but it's been a great experience. The sports center is great. The versatility of machines, um, you know, there's some improvements that could be made, um, but obviously, you know, the pandemic probably put things a little behind. So um, the new Stairmasters, those like the connect to your watch, amazing. It makes the workout so much easier. Um, I'd like to see some treadmills like that, but my workout like today was cut because childcare, you know, if there was someone to watch the kid and extended hours also, that would help my wife get to the gym, especially on the weekends. Um, even opening a little earlier on the week, weekdays would help out with that and, you know, help out a lot. And I think people made a lot of great suggestions and the staff, yes, is amazing. And I definitely think they need more help. So thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. My name is Jesse Chambers, and I just want to reiterate, hi, Hans, good to see you, sir. I want to reiterate about mental illness, not just that the physical part is uh, very important to all of us in our community, but mental health is a real issue, and it has been a privilege to be living in this great area to have the sports center, and my daughter grew up with child care, and I think we ought to bring back a lot of the programs. So I just wanted to get up and introduce myself, and uh, I know you guys have a hard decision coming up, but please pay attention to all of us. We, we will make the city. Thank you. Hello, my name is Erin Decca, and I'm from Marina. And there's two things that I wanted to say. Um, I used to be a member off and on before the pandemic, and I came back for the first time a couple of weeks ago to swim. And the sports center felt dead. It was so sad. And I'm one of the, the people from the pandemic who now works mostly remotely. And the intention for me to come was to swim, was to get something to eat from the cafe, and to sit and be in the community of the sports center. And it felt horrible to come in and see all of that gone. Um, and I know some of that is pandemic, but I also think listening to everyone here today, I hope that that can be brought back because I'm of a different generation than most of the people here. And I want to know, I want my generation to be shown that it's important that it stays open for me too. And then the other thing I wanted to say is that in the presentation, there was a talk about having instructors be contract based. And I really want to say don't do that. Um, in order to build community, you want to have those group classes knowing you're going to have the same instructor and you're going to be able to build that rapport. And in order to do that, you need to take care of those instructors by making them employees and taking care of them and not having someone who's a contractor who could really come and go as needed. Thank you. Hi, Mayor and Council. My name is Lana Wilson. I'm from Monterey, and I agree with what she said about the contract workers. 
the contract workers. It's okay to have some to have a variety of classes, but I like the core people that we have already. And another thing I heard from Susie was um, to automate the front desk and put a manager in charge. And I hope you don't go the way of, you know, Home Depot where I have to check my own bags and nobody says hi and I have to pack my own groceries. You know, I don't, I come to the sports center and I see people at the front and that's part of the community. Um, child care is huge. My daughter's 21. She went to Miss Dana's for 10 years. It's the best two hours of my life. <laughs> and um, I like the free parking you have two hours. It's so great. You don't have to look for quarters. Um, it's wonderful and clean there. Um, don't raise the prices. Young people go elsewhere. And I think that um, family membership should be including everybody in the household, not just your mom and your dad and the kids. If you have roommates, they should be included in family memberships and they shouldn't be so expensive. It's too expensive in my opinion. And even though I'm from Monterey, I don't pay that extra surcharge. If you want 30 minutes out, people don't charge them more. You know, let the people who work here have the same price I have. And that's about it. Thank you. I'm Dan O'Brien. I, I won't recant all the excellent detail and accolades that have been already presented. I'll just offer two points. One, uh, provide more regular and uh, detailed maintenance of the equipment. We really need it. I hate to come in and see signs out of order going on two or three or four days, nuts, bolts and nuts falling off. It can't be. Also, bring back workout towels in every cubby in the place. I sweat and I love to wipe it off. I know you can't bring back full service towel, and again, probably because it's just expensive, but workout towels, I think you can do that. Good evening. My name is Lydia Lyons. Uh, when I moved to the Monterey Peninsula in 2004, I didn't know anyone. And so I thought I would join a gym. So I joined the sports center. And because of the sports center, I was able to integrate into this fabulous community. Uh, these instructors, I cannot tell you how grateful I am to have people that I can come to and help train me. And when COVID happened and shut us down, we were working out on the patio by the pool and we showed up every time we could. And it was the thing, the thing that kept me sane. So you've got to keep the sports center. You have to keep these instructors and take care of them because they take care of us. They take care of our community. Thank you. This is a testament to the staff, to Lori, all of you, because I hate public speaking. Um, but I'll throw my voice in that I think bringing back the kids zone and the cafe and the expanded hours um, really adds to the vibrancy and the vitality of the facility. I've been going there for 15 years and um, it was pretty dead when we first came back post pandemic and it's really getting there. Um, the recommendations for expansion and membership attraction obviously all sound great. But I think what concerns me um, are some of the cost saving measures, particularly about contracting out the services. One of the things that hasn't been mentioned about contract workers, besides the fact that Lance, you're right, uh, you know, they cover for each other. It's a really core group of instructors. That's really wonderful for us. But if they become contract workers, they don't get disability. They don't get unemployment benefits. They don't get workers comp. And the fact that there's so few full, sorry, full time employees and that you've um, switched a lot of part-time employees means that you're really kind of balancing the budget on the backs of the staff. They don't get the health insurance. They don't get the retirement benefits and so on. So I hope you'll try and find a different way to make the numbers work rather than on the backs of the staff. Just real quick before you start, is anybody else going to be planning on speaking? If you could step up just so we can make sure we're running short on time here. Okay. Good evening, y'all. Thanks for giving me a chance to speak. Um, two thoughts. One revolves around brand management. I realize that to open a thing like a cafe, you have inventory, you have spoilage, you have all the operational mechanics. But here's a different side of brand management. 
I travel up and down the coast extensively. Every town I go to, I go to the sports center to try to work out. This is definitely the best. But more importantly, in terms of brand management, have this have the city attorney work with staff and come up with camera ready art, create a licensing agreement, and market it to all the guys and gals that own t-shirt shops, whether it's in Carmel, PG, Seaside, Monterey, whatever. You can have, I want to buy shirts, but I can't. I realize you don't want to tie up city capital. So go ahead, get camera ready art, a licensing agreement, collaborate with the with the markets that those people know. I want to I want to see all of you when we're at Trader Joe's, but I don't know who you are. <laughs> if I'm wearing a shirt, it works. Second thing, uh, volunteerism. I realize in a litigious culture that there's the balance between the city attorney's fears for li uh, uh, litigation, but also a lot of us would love to have our volunteer T-shirt and do whatever we can. So what can we do to volunteer? I realize there's liability. Work on that, brand management and volunteerism. Thank you, folks. Is there anybody else that wanna speak? Oh. Uh, hi, my name is Moira and I have been, Moira Mulligan and I have been, um, uh, resident of Monterey for around 12 years, and uh, if it weren't for the Monterey Sports Center, I don't know where I would be. It's been literally a lifesaver for me. Um, transplanted from New York City, it was a major culture shock coming here, and it was hard. It was hard, you know, given the older population, to really meet friends, to to, to create new relationships, and and. Um, um, I, I have been struggling with um, autoimmune illness for uh, as long as I've been here. And there's a gal, Huntsy, who's, I think, 81. She's a member of the center. And um, she gives me uh, no leeway in feeling sorry for myself because she runs marathons. And so she's a wonderful example that we just keep on trying. And I just think um, in closing that um, the mental health of this country has been very challenged, uh, you know, always, but significantly for me, uh, I would say profoundly within the past 10 years. And uh, mental health is so much of my takeaway from this center. It really does connect me with other people. And, you know, they say co connection is the opposite of addiction. And we do have an addiction problem, you know, uh, in this country, big time. So with that, I thank you for your time. And um, thank you for your service. Thank you. Anybody else in the chamber wish to speak on this item? Okay, we'll take it online. Yes, first we have Lori Mazuka. Hello, good evening. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, great. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's such a bummer to not be there <laughs> with all of you, but I had a work Zoom until five. So um, I'm glad to be here. A lot of people made a lot of good points that are also on my list, so I won't belabor that in the essence of time. Um, but I would like to also follow up and emphasize something someone else said uh, about why is there no solar on the <laughs> rooftop of that sports center? I, I think that would be a great cost-cutting measure to uh, even fund a couple of staff positions. Um, it, as well, I'm also wondering why there are no low flow shower heads. I love a good flow shower like anybody else, but I think considering the cost of water in this area and energy and how much goes out at that sports center, I think that would be another good cost cutting measure. Uh, the other thing, I, I also agree with utilizing the underutilized spaces for potential revenue streams, whether that be uh, leasing them out for uh, studios, massage therapy rooms, physical therapy, uh, other contracted services, whatever. Great. I think do it. Um, and collaborations. We're all squeezed. I think there's other, oh, I'm running out of time already. Um, just other facilities that we could collaborate with. Uh, Monterey Peninsula College is one with their swimming pools, their pickleball. No all right. Thank you. I'm sorry. Your time is up. Um, next is Jean Rash. Uh, thank you. I want to second the call to um, volunteer 
work. I, I know it's hard to organize, but somehow we need to put, especially our seniors who want to volunteer, let's reopen that um, kids zone and um, get the grandmas and grandpas out there playing with the kids. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have a telephone caller with the last three digits, 765. You'll need to dial star six to unmute. Go ahead, please. Good afternoon. My name is Esther Malkin, and I have um, spent a lot of time at the sports center years ago before an injury. Um, and I don't think anybody on the council or in the chambers disagrees with all the great comments about it, about the staff, about the facility, about the benefits. Um, I wanted to point out um, to the volleyball guy that there's a volleyball court at Laguna Grande Park that is has been resurfaced recently and there's very little activity there. Um, but I also wanted to mention the sports center is like our house, right? And our house needs money to function. So we have to bring in some cash. So if everybody who loves the sports center so much would support a bond measure that would help not just the sports center, but all the parks and recreation staff and department, we would probably be able to upgrade, maintain, improve that sports center without a problem. But the money's gotta come from somewhere and a bond measure is really the only way that I can see it happening. So we're gonna have to put our money where our, our mouths are and dig deep to make it happen because it's not gonna happen on its own. And there's no question that the staff or the council or anybody doesn't want it. So we have to think about how we're gonna keep it there. All right, thank you. And our next speaker is um, Bonnie Daniel. I, I have been going to the sports center for over 20 some years, and we have formed such an alliance. We're called the Poolettes. We meet every single day. We're like 60s, 70s, and the 80s. And it is such a great opportunity for us seniors to be able to go to the pool every morning and have a workout. And the friendship continues. It's not just the pool, but this is what we have gotten out of the sports center. It's been a wonderful place for all of us and um, keep it up. And we hate to see Andrea leaving, but anyway, uh, thank you all for listening to all the great comments, but the pool, poolettes love you. Thank you. Bye. And there are no further hands raised, Mr. Mayor. All right. Awesome. All right, so it's back to the council and I ask for as much as it's worth for us to keep it brief here because we're over time, knowing that we'll be bringing this back for a deeper discussion at, at a later point. So who wants to start us off? Councilmember Smith, I see you getting ready to shuffle your papers around here. Well, I, I have probably 30 or 40 minutes worth of comments, but um, obviously as a senior uh, Dan right. Albert, and mayor. hold on one second, Ed. if I could just ask the conversations in the chamber just to keep it low so that folks that are trying to listen can can hear. All right, go ahead, Ed. I appreciate their energy. Uh, I was just going to say that I appreciate that the setup for this is the process. We have a lot of options that are um, revealed in the report, the agenda. Uh, excellent report, thought provoking. Um, sidebar, I've got plenty of notes to pull out of that, but I just want to say um, very much appreciate the fact that we have a sports center, unlike many other communities. I would still say and hold that this is the crown jewel of the city of Monterey, and I have no intention of seeing it decline. So the purpose of this process is to look at options, formulas, um, bringing back programs, but we certainly have to pay attention to the uh, the, the revenue side of it because we, we certainly want to have a crown jewel that continues to be a shining location for our citizens and visitors. So lots of work ahead of us, uh, looking forward to hearing from staff's uh, specific re recommendations on personnel programs and how we see the slide of 
uh, increased um, revenue that balances. Uh, we can't carry a deficit to this large number uh, forever, but I think that there are plenty of opportunities that are revealed in this report and look forward to working with this council to identify the ones that we think are going to work the best uh, to maintain a top quality facility for our residents. And, and everybody on the peninsula that obviously is using the facility, but more to follow. Looking forward to working with the council to do this. Gino. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I have many questions and comments as well, but I'm going to keep it pretty short. I think there's a um, sentence in the uh, study that really um, uh, I think characterizes also the way that I feel about the uh, sports center. Um, and the quote is, the city is proud of the uh, dedicated, talented, and customer service oriented team that makes the Monterey Sports Center known as the premier fitness facility on the Mon Monterey Peninsula. Um, and um, I agree, it's, it's a gem. Um, and what I'm gonna add here is that um, the information that the study uh, is offering, I think also could be a great starting point um, for us to consider as we also start looking at um, what we do with our rec centers throughout the city. And I'm gonna throw in also the uh, desire to uh, apply maybe some of these um, recommendations to locations like the Casanova Park Center as well. So that that's all I'll share for now. Thanks. First of all, I want to thank all of you for coming out. Um, you know, it's very, very important. Um, we hear you and we hear your enthusiasm and your support and that matters. And we share that enthusiasm and support for um, the Sports Center and all of the Parks and Rec programs. You know, sometimes um, you get, I get the feeling sometimes that, um, parks and rec and, um, these kind of community services are not seen as essential services, but they are. And I think you spoke eloquently to why they are, um, in terms of the report and the recommendations, I think, um, for the most part, they all made sense. I did hear the community, um, express some concerns about the contract work. And I share those concerns. I do think there's opportunities there there you know for certain classes that where the instructor is fitting a particular niche and that's a particular niche that um, we wouldn't have somebody full-time to meet um, but I but I do hear what folks are saying um, it is different um, and so yeah I think we have to move forward with that with some caution in terms of some of the other comments, gosh, there were so many good suggestions from the speakers, um, the volunteerism. I just wonder if it wouldn't make sense for us to have a volunteer coordinator for all aspects of the city, um, you know, for the library, for um, parks, for some of our historical things, for the sports center and so on. I think that would pay, pay off in dividends, um, the cost of, of that staff person. Um, extra hours, obviously, we need those. Kids zone, it was really clear that that's important. I don't know about why we haven't installed solar because, folks, we have installed solar in lots of other places, but if that's feasible and that would cut costs, absolutely. The idea of branding and licensing um, T-shirts, yeah, that's a brilliant idea. Um, we should We should do that. Um, and yeah, let's bring back our staff. We made that commitment when we had to lay people off that when we could do it, we, we would, and that time has come. So thank you very much. So, um, I want to start off by, um, identifying or, or recognizing that when I read the the agenda report and 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 seeing the results of the study, to me it had a very business centric um, mindset, um, and and I think that's good. Well, that perspective is needed, um, but I think you know hearing Karen's story, hearing all the public comments, seeing all of you here today, um, it I think can set a tone that doesn't allow us to focus on 
where the priority really needs to and should be, um, which is this social aspect of it. And so I really appreciate you, Karen, sharing uh, that story um, uh, that, that kicked us off because I really think it helps set the tone for reshifting kind of where that energy needs to be focused. Um, that social aspect is so important and I heard it in a lot of stories from people um, using this as an outlet because they've lost a, a partner or they just moved here and trying to you know establish new relationships um, or you know they would love to have a place where they can have a break from their kids and do some self-care. Um, you know, I can go on and on. There was a lot of stories and, and we heard those and, and, and that's why this process is so important. Um, one, some of the things that I take away from that social piece um, is the idea of inclusion. Um, there are people, and, and, I, and I think that there's a way that we can have this conversation that goes beyond how the sports center has been operating. Um, because even if we keep rates the same and don't increase them, there are people in our community that cannot afford to go to the sports center. And so how do we make this a space where everybody in our community, regardless of your income level, can participate? And I wonder where an, an affordable option can be created. I know that we have you know, Monterey residents versus non-Monterey residents, um, but we need to look deeper there because there are people in our community that I know that want to attend, that want to participate, um, that can't. So we need to think about that. But we're looking at folks, young, old, uh, rich, poor, um, social, anti-social. So the sports center provides that really great social need that um, doesn't have a cost on it. Um, it is priceless. The um, need for investment. I think one of the things that we have to think about here, we were talking about the idea of solar. These are all great things. And I don't think anybody disagrees with the idea of us moving forward with that, but there's a cost to that investment. And so how do we do that effectively? Um, I think we just need to think through that. The investment is good and it's needed and we need to do that the sooner the better um, because we can reap the benefits um, sooner if, if we do it now. Just how do we do that? I think is a deeper conversation that the council is gonna need to have. Um, but there's a lot of space on top of the, sports center that we can capture. I probably, I can imagine more energy than the sports center will need. Um, um, I want to speak to our staff. Um, and again, I'm reiterating a point that I've heard a lot of folks say our staff is top tier and it warms my heart to hear that affirmation from the public. And so kudos to the entire team for all the work that you all do for setting that standard and for making the Monterey Sports Center that crown jewel that everybody sees it to be. So Rick, a lot of kudos to our staff for that. Um, and, and because of that, we do need to take care of them. So I know that there's this conversation around um, uh, contracting out. Um, and, and I think it was one of the, the last um, public comments on that um, was the idea that our core needs to be um, city staff on our, on our workforce. I think that there might be some space to contract out, like if somebody wants to come in and teach a course and they have their business, like we need that goodness in our community too. Um, but in general, um, I, we, we, I, if, if I have anything to do about it, we're not going to get rid of any of our city staff in, in, in our sports center um, because we need to take care of our workforce. Um, and there was a comment made about the healthcare and all the benefits associated with it. We need to take care of our workforce. Um, and then one thing that I, it's almost a question, but it's a little bit rhetorical. Um, um, I'm wondering if any of our staff attend conferences, um, sports centers conferences, so that we can make sure that our staff is aware of the latest and greatest cutting edge programs. Um, the marketing strategy is something that I'm particularly interested in learning a little bit more about and making sure that we refine that and making sure that we're investing in that space. Um, and then the last point that that I will share, at least on my my notes here, is I think it would be great. Um, so so I'll share that I, I have attended the sports center um, prior to becoming mayor. My my schedule these days um, is is maybe not allowing it, and of course I can change that for myself if if I made the effort to. Um, but what, what I will say is I, there was a couple of comments made around the council and, and us being in that space. Um, and so I wonder what the opportunities look like for a public meeting of the council in the sports center before we make any huge policy decisions in regards to the future of the sports center so that we can be in there together with the public. And, and, and I'll just end with, thank you all so much for being here today. It really means a lot. This is 
This is um, the core. Uh, uh, Gino and I have a lot of conversations around public pu public um, engagement, um, and you all are doing it. So please help continue spreading the word around these efforts and around um, programs at the Sports Center. Thank you all for being here today, and everybody have a wonderful evening. Take care.